Immerse yourself in the profound insights offered by Father Chuck Belmonte as he delves into daily reflections on various gospel passages from the Bible. February 10th, Saturday, Authenticity. For decades, being authentic meant being non-conforming, true to yourself, which usually translated, indulge your base instincts, do not reason about them. Christian cultures and society were the arch enemies of authenticity. Authenticity was one of the four goods involving human relationships. They begin with integrity, integrating all the parts of the person, emotions, instincts, reason, and will into one unified direction consistent with our ultimate end. Only when we're not divided within ourselves could we be authentic i.e. reveal to the world what is inside as a unified whole, not a contradictory welter of instincts, passions, feelings, and slogans. Once what you see is what you get inside and outside, a person can enter into relationships with other human persons, i.e. friendship, and only then can persons enter into relations with the fullness of personhood, i.e. God, which is religion. That kind of authenticity is hard. It's not the authenticity of take me as I feel like it, because that claim could be inauthentic to my true self. Why talk about authenticity at all? because there are many efforts to use selective authenticity to advance bad moral positions. Some seem possessed by a mania about welcoming, which ignores how Jesus welcomed people to the kingdom. Repent, metanoiet in the original Greek, literally means to turn around from sin to God, which the term welcome does not imply. Jesus accepted the kiss of Judas, but he also warned him of his impending betrayal. Where to start? First, the church's mission is not to promote your lifestyle, but to put every lifestyle under gospel scrutiny, calling for conversion where it is needed. The person who thinks the church's mission is to declare, I'm okay, you're okay is mistaken about both the church and her mission. He's mistaken about the church because the church exists to foster a life modeled on the full truth of the gospel, on Christ, not select visions of acceptance disconnected from Christian morality. He's mistaken about her mission too because the Christian mission is not to say that we are all okay, because we are all sinners, but by accepting the demands and the way of life of the gospel in Jesus Christ, we are made okay. That's very different from expecting the church to be your personal cheering squad. Second, when someone believes in authenticity, he cannot deny it to others, individuals and institutions. Parents love children whose decisions and lives may disappoint them. Sometimes parents even think those decisions and lives are self-destructive. The child may not agree, but the child has no ground to demand a parent surrender to his or her authenticity to become another voice of affirmation in the chorus. Parents have a right, sometimes even a duty, arising from the wellsprings of faith to sound a dissenting note that's part of their authenticity. So while you are entitled to your parents and the church's love, you are not entitled to compromise their authenticity in the name of your acceptance. That would be to make the proud claim that you are more authentic than others. I would be delighted to extend another invitation for you to join me tomorrow.
embracing the opportunity to once again immerse ourselves in the uplifting wisdom of Father Chuck as he guides us on our spiritual journey in faith.